Okay, section 6.5 is looking again at integrals. So I would really consider this kind of a, a review section. It's just looking at some more complicated integrals. But actually, we know how to deal with these. These are the integrals where I do a substitution. So we've done these before. The only difference in this section is that uh, now I have limits of integration. So I'm dealing with definite integrals instead of indefinite integrals. Okay, but the process is the same. Okay, so then I go up and I maybe rearrange my integrand here. That way I can see my x dx. Okay, now I have to be careful in this step because in this step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this integrand in terms of u. So now I have square root of u. And then let's see, the x dx turns into the 1 half du. Okay, but what I was saying you have to be careful with is, well, notice how these limits of integration are in terms of x, okay? Not in terms of u. So what I have to do here is I have to rewrite those limits in terms of u. So I'm looking at this guy, this equation. So my new limits of integration, let's see, u is nine plus x squared. So nine plus zero squared would be nine. Nine plus Four squared would be what? 16? Okay, so now I have my integral in terms of u. But other than that, it's really identical to what we've done before. Okay, so the integration. to be two-thirds, then evaluated from 9 to 16. That's that fundamental theorem of calculus that's going to come in next, where I'm going to actually go ahead and evaluate at the upper limit and then subtract the evaluation at the lower limit. So let me go ahead and fill that in. I guess I move this one down a bit. Okay, so what is this going to be? So it's going to be one third times 16 to the three halves minus nine to the three halves. Okay, now something like 16 to the 3 halves, that's the same as the square root of 16 cubed, right? So that would be what, 4 cubed? So I have a third, and then 64 minus, and then same idea with 9 to the 3 halves. That'd be 3 cubed, 27? So what does this come out to be? Is that 7, 37? So 1 third times 37. That looks like 37 over 3.
Do you? Should we try another one? Okay. So we do my substitution. So let's see, du would be 4x dx. So I guess a fourth du would account for my x dx. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite the integral in terms of u. So I have e to the u, and then my x dx, I'm replacing it with the one quarter. du. Now again, I have to rewrite my limits of integration in terms of u using this equation. So my new limits of integration, let's see, two times zero squared is zero, and then two times two squared, two times four, is that one eight? Okay, so there are my limits of integration in terms of u. So then it's a quarter. Okay, now the integral of e to the u is just e to the u, evaluating from 0 to 8. Okay, and then e to the 0 is just 1. So something like that. So a half du would be x dx. Okay, so then our next step, let's just rearrange this. So isn't this the same as this, right? Because here I just multiply straight across, like this is x over 1, so that ends up in the numerator, right? Then I'm going to rewrite the integral in terms of u. So it's 1 over square root of the x dx is replaced with the 1 half du from over here. Let me rewrite my limits of integration. So 0 squared plus 5 is 5. 2 squared plus 5 is 9.
Okay. What about something like number four? So that one, I guess the substitution's a little more interesting. I mean, the inner piece is x plus one, but then du dx is just one here. In other words, du is equal to dx. Hmm. So this is one of those ones where you had to say, well, let me see here. Wouldn't x then be u minus one? So if I actually go to rewrite this thing, let's see, the x turns into u minus one, and then I have the square root of u. Oh, okay. That expression is going to be simpler to work with than this expression. Because this guy over here, I can't actually distribute the x, I'm stuck. Versus this one, I'll actually be able to distribute this u to the one half, and then it'll actually be very easy to do my integration. Okay, so let's see. So my du is equal to my dx. Then I have to change my limits of integration, writing those in u instead of in x. So let's see what those would be then. So then u is x plus one. So two, two and five. So then I have u minus 1 times u to the 1 half, right? So then this is where I was saying we'll distribute the u to the 1 half. So that's u to the 3 halves minus u to the 1 half. And that's very easy to integrate, so that's u to the 5 halves, 2 fifths, and then 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves, and then I'm going to evaluate at the limits of integration here. So this is using my fundamental theorem of calculus. So I have two fifths times five to the five halves. So that's the square root of five to the fifth. And you can put that five inside or outside. So I don't know, maybe I'll put it outside. And then minus two thirds and then the square root of five cubed. And then minus, now I plug in my two. over here so before I go on let me just go through this first part one more time so what I did here is I plugged in my five okay here and here so I have two fifths and then square root of five to the fifth minus two thirds and then square root of five cubed okay then my two so then I'll have two fifths square root of two to the fifth minus two thirds square root of two cubed. So this one doesn't look too nice. Let me just look at it and see if there's anything I can do to simplify. I don't know how useful it would be, so I think I would just leave this. Let's see, two fifths root five to the fifth. And then two thirds root five cubed I would distribute the negative. Okay, and then let's just make sure I got all the signs right. And it looks like it, so I think I would just leave it there.
Okay, number five. Let's try u equals x over five. That's a fifth times x, right? So then du dx is just a fifth. A fifth dx. Okay, so then guess D X is five D. So then rewriting my integrant, let's see, I'll have E to the U, and then DX is five D U. Five on the outside. Okay, now I still have to change my limits of integration here so that they're in terms of u instead of x. So u is a fifth x, so I guess I'd have zero and one fifth. So five e to the u evaluated from zero to a fifth. five times the fifth root of e minus five times one. So you can leave it like that, or you can factor out the five. like one more of these. So looks like u is root x, x to the one half. And so du, well, let me see, maybe I should thinking let's see that's the same as a half times 1 over x to the half it's 1 over 2 root of x it's the same as a half times 1 over root of x times dx right Multiplying those straight across. Okay, because you see how if you look back up here at the integrand, you see how what I have, let's see, I've got e to the root x, and then I've got times 1 over root x times dx, which is this part. So let me see, I guess, 2 du is that 1 over root x dx. Okay, so then let me rewrite this in u. So that's going to be e to the u, and then my 1 over root x dx turns into 2 du. Then rewriting my limits of integration. So let's see, square root of one is one, square root of four is two. So then I have two e to the u evaluated from one to two. And let me move some things around so we have enough space. Move that down.
factor an E out, it doesn't really matter. So we could leave it here or here. going to go into too much detail with this one. It can be shown that the average value of a function over the integral or over the interval a b is 1 over b minus a times the indefinite integral of the function on the integral or on the integral again a to b. Okay, so here I'm interested in the average value of f of x. So, so these are actually really easy. This is just one little application of a definite integral. So here's my first example. I have the function f of x is x squared. So my a, I guess, would be negative 1. My b would be positive 1. And then I have to set up my average value using that theorem above. So it'd be 1 over b minus a. And then the integral from a to b of the function with respect to x. Okay, and then my integral. So let's see, that'd be a third x cubed. and then evaluate it from negative one to one. So then x cubed. So x cubed is, let's see, that'd be one cubed minus negative one cubed. end up with a 6 times 2, 1 third. Okay, so the average value of that function x squared from negative 1 to 1 is 1 third. I don't know if it's useful to think about a graph or not. I'm just kind of curious. If it is at all, so here's the function x squared. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying in between negative one and one here, the average y value would be one third. Well, this that seems kind of like it makes sense because if I look at say this point, halfway between zero and one here, the y value 
value is only at a quarter. So the function spends more time above one quarter, say, than below. So on average, I would expect the y value to be bigger than a quarter. So one third seems like a reasonable estimate, a reasonable number for that average value. Okay, how about one more? What is that? Two thirds? Uh, well, let's see. That's two over four. Give me a two in the bottom. One sixth. And then I evaluate. to the 3 halves is the square root of 4 cubed. It's 8, right? And then 0. So 8, 6. This is 4 thirds. So let me just think about if this makes any sense. I don't want to go into too much detail. I just want to see if it looks reasonable. So the function is square root of x. And I'm looking on the interval 0 to 4. So on this interval, finding the average value of y. And so the average value of y is 4 thirds. So it's a little bit bigger than 1. 